Hi everyone, I'm meteorologist Pat Prokop here in Savannah, Georgia, looking at the southeast United States, particularly southeastern Georgia and eastern and southeastern South Carolina, but also looking at northern portions of Florida and uh, the southern portions of North Carolina with the weather conditions across our region. Now, today is Saturday, the uh, 17th of January, and it looks like a winter weather system will be moving across portions of our region. That's a good question. Which portions will it cover? And how much, if any, precipitation will fall? And will it fall in the form of a cold rain? Or will it be a slushy snow? Well, it depends on where you are. Let's go, first of all, and take a look upstairs at the jet stream because this is the major player uh, in this game. So here we go, looking at the jet stream. And at the moment, we have a southwest to northeast flow across the southeast United States. And that's giving us those warmer temperatures right now. I'm at 67 degrees here at the Heavenly Backyard Garden. Uh, it feels pretty nice out there, too, with some uh, rays of sunshine coming across. But... Over here, we're seeing a big wave in the atmosphere, and this is a very potent wave at that. And it's going to pivot itself down into the southeast, coming across Georgia and South Carolina throughout the morning hours uh, into the early afternoon. As it does, it's going to provi provide the lifting for uh, heavy precipitation potential in the form of rain and in the form of snow as cold air will be flowing in across the area. With that being said, let's take a look at the advisories. Uh, a winter storm warning is now in effect for the central portion of the state of Georgia, basically in and around Macon and southward. Uh, and uh, zooming in on this, we can see uh, just about where uh, the winter storm warning is in effect. A possibility of up to um, one to three inches of a slushy snow falling across this area. That includes Cordell, Americus, Eastman, Cochran, Warner Robins, Macon, Dublin. And then a winter weather advisory is in effect for the areas all around that region. And that includes the uh, states, uh, the Swain Swainsboro area down to Lyons. Basically everywhere around US-1 and westward from there is under a winter weather advisory. About an inch of snow, a wet slushy snow could fall across those areas. Further to the south, that's where a uh, freeze warning is in effect for a large portion of the area south of the Adama River. A freeze warning is no longer issued across the upper portions of southeastern Georgia since we've had some very deep freezes already and a freeze warning, uh, it does not apply anymore because all the vegetation basically has bit the dust that's going to be biting the dust in a hard freeze. But not only around here, but uh, this storm is going to be quite potent off to the northeast where uh, up in the um, mid-Atlantic coastal states over into Philadelphia, New York City, uh, up into Boston, moderate to heavy snow is going to be falling out in that area. And with the cold, cold air flowing across the Great Lakes states, uh, uh, lake effect snows are going to be falling across the um, wind areas off of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. Uh, some of these areas are expecting in and around the Buffalo area, perhaps up to two to four feet of snow early next week from these severe lake effect snows that are expected across that area. But around here, though, we're keeping an eye on our region for that winter storm warning for the central portions of Georgia. Georgia. Let's take a look at the... Um, uh, conditions now for our area here, winter storm severity index uh, for our region. And there you can see uh, the area across central Georgia where that uh, winter storm warning is in effect is uh, calling for moderate impacts, expect uh, uh, disruptions to uh, daily life, uh, hazardous driving conditions, use extra caution while driving in this area. And uh, uh, it, it, it's going to be a, a little bit on the tricky side. Interstate 16 and Interstate 95 in and around the Macon area to Dublin, further south to uh, Cochrane, uh, could be some issues there. And also further to the south, all the way down to the uh, southwest portion of Georgia and extreme northern portions of Florida, a uh, possibility of snow there. Let's take a look at the uh, forecast map. This is the national I mean, the North American model from the National Weather Service. And uh, it's a high resolution model. And this is at uh, midnight tonight, and let's go ahead and advance it over, uh, actually I was at 7 o'clock this evening, now going into the evening hours and up to midnight right there. You can see scattered light rain and moderate rain developing across central and west central Georgia into southwest 
uh, portions of Georgia, southeast Alabama, across the western portion of the Florida Peninsula. And then as we go into time, the uh, precipitation continues to spread eastward. And then by um, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, that's 13 Zulu, uh, there we got some moderate to heavy rains, moderate rains anyway, uh, to uh, be falling across central and eastern, southeastern Georgia and all of eastern South Carolina. A cold rain, if you mind, uh, it would be a cold, miserable rain, basically. A gloomy day uh, shaping up across the eastern counties of our region. But there is the snow that will be expected to be falling across the central portions of Georgia into extreme southeast Alabama and the portions of the central peninsula of Fl or the panhandle of Florida. And then going ahead for uh, the rest of the day, going into the late morning hours, there we have at 10 o'clock in the morning, you see that band of snow. Could be some moderate uh, periods of heavy snow in those areas. Uh, around 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, between 8 o'clock to, to 12 noon, uh, there could be some, it's not out of the question, some thunder snow squall. You might get some uh, squalls uh, that are intense enough where lightning and thunder can be produced from that. That wave coming down with the jet stream is very potent, and that could produce a considerable amount of lifting, which could generate thunder snow. Now, if you hear thunder while it's snowing, uh, that is an indication that very heavy snow will be falling across that area. Meanwhile, across the coastal counties of Georgia and South Carolina, it'll be just in the form of a cold, gloomy, rain. And as we go into the afternoon hours, this is as of uh, uh, three o'clock in the afternoon and uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. Here we go. And uh, the conditions show that precipitation continues to march eastward. The snow uh, uh, leaves Georgia, continues across central South Carolina, uh, brushes near the coastal counties of South Carolina, but keeps it more or less cold rain there. It moves across central and northern uh, portions of the um, North Carolina area. What I want to do is show you the uh, uh, conditions further to the north. Let's go up to the um, mid-Atlantic coastal states up into New England because that's where the storm is really going to be causing major problems there. If you have any uh, conditions where flying uh, and traveling up to the northeast along the I-95 corridor, uh, it looks like moderate to heavy snow will be falling across that region. Uh, this is as of um, late tomorrow afternoon, about 4 o'clock, and then going into the uh, sunset and uh, nighttime hours on Sunday. Um, this is as of 7 o'clock Sunday evening, moderate to heavy snow falling across the uh, Delmarva Peninsula, all of New Jersey, eastern portions of Pennsylvania, uh, all of New York, including New York City, Long Island, and into Boston. So that's going to really cause problems with air traffic. Uh, expect major delays to be associated with that. All right, let's take a look at the um, temperatures. That's the other issue that we associate it with this system. Another surge of polar air, cold Arctic air coming down across the uh, area. Let's put this quickly into motion. You can see very, very cold temperatures off to the uh, north portion of the upper Mississippi Valley. Temperatures below zero there. That's not the windshield. That's the actual temperatures uh, in that area there and going into early next week. Uh, we're beginning to see a warm-up in the southern states and uh, uh, temperatures will be above freezing by uh, Wednesday or Thursday morning across our area. But looking at a closer view of the southeast, here's the uh, conditions for tomorrow morning, Sunday morning. We're going to start off in the upper 30s and perhaps lower 40s. And the temperature tomorrow morning uh, basically will be the highs for the day as well. It might warm up a little bit as uh uh, temperatures might warm into the middle 40s before the rains really start falling. The rain's going to keep temperatures on the cold side. Uh, and then where the uh, snow is falling, it's going to be uh, a little bit colder as well. Then by uh, Sunday night, Monday morning, temperatures in the deep freeze once again in the low to middle 20s across a large portion of our region, the entire southeast except for southern Florida. Even central Florida will be uh, uh, flirting with the freezing mark, if not below freezing, just to the uh, east of the Tampa Bay area. And then going into uh, um, Monday night, Tuesday morning, basically the same thing, mid-20s across many areas, all the way out to the coastline. And then by uh, Wednesday morning, a Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, we should see another deep freeze. So we got three nights in a row of deep freezing temperatures across our area. But then things begin to moderate after that by Thursday morning in the lower 40s, upper 30s, lower 40s, and uh, maybe two degrees cooler on uh, um, Thursday night, Friday morning. So looking at my webpage, savannapat.name, 
or savannapant.com now. You can get my web uh, page and a lot of w- great weather information here, my daily weather discussion and uh, expecting a lot of precipitation to for- fall in the form of rain. How much? Perhaps about a half inch of rain uh, falling across our area here. Um, and, but the hard freeze coming in overnight, tomorrow night, uh, expect to see the temperatures dropping down into the low to middle 20s once again. And be on the alert for, particularly if you're driving west uh, of uh, Interstate 95, be on the lookout for what's called black ice. That's moisture that uh, freezes after the precipitation has stopped and it, it can form on overpasses and bridges and also on the wide expanse of roadways that cool faster than the other areas. And any water, puddles, whatever, could freeze, and that forms ice, and you can't really see it. It's called black ice for that reason. And uh, be careful if you're driving on black ice. If you think you're uh, uh, riding across black ice, do not put your foot on the brake. Uh, Just take your foot off the accelerator and glide through it. Uh, That's the uh, safest way to avoid uh, uh, getting into a skid on black ice. Um, The hard freeze continues overnight on Monday night and Tuesday night. Then after that, we're going to see temperatures moderating somewhat. And then over the next several weeks, uh, my six-week outlook, of course, this week way below normal. Uh, The the following two weeks, the end of January going into early February, we're going to remain below the normal. Normal high for this time of the year um, at the end of January is in the lower 60s, lows around 40. Uh, So we'll be flirting with those freezing temperatures once again, uh, or sub-freezing temperatures. But then going into the middle of um, February to the latter latter portion of February, uh, it looks like temperatures will be uh, warming to around the normal and then above normal. Uh, for the end of February. By then, the uh, high temperature, normal high is 67. And if we're above that, that means we're talking 70s and normal lows in the uh, middle 40s. So, uh, you know, middle 40s to upper 40s for the overnight lows coming up in uh, February. But for the next three weeks, it'll be our winter here in the Southeast. I'd like to thank all those who have been uh, supporting my page. Uh, I really appreciate it. It keeps this page up and running. And you could also, if you would like, uh, you could uh, join my channel for just $2 a month if you want, or up to $5 a month if you want to be a, 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 a friend of Pat Prokop's Weather and Nature page. I appreciate that very much. Super thanks. All those help keep this page up and running. And I keep you posted. I'll keep you posted on this weather event as the uh, events unfold. And stay tuned to this channel and my website, Savannah Pat, that's me, uh, .com, and to get you all the great weather information for throughout the greater Savannah area. That includes Hilton Head, that includes Statesboro, that includes St. Simons Island, one of my favorite places to go, and over into uh, Jessup and Waycross in southeastern Georgia. Okay, with that being said, stay dry tomorrow and stay warm. It's going to be cold. See you later. Bye.